Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for January, where we have five recent updates from Firebase today, so let's dig in right away. The Firebase console shows an overview of the activity on your security rules like we see over here. But you can use cloud monitoring to get more detailed information and to set up alerts. Now, here's a view of the cloud storage rules evaluations in cloud monitoring. You can tweak this view to your needs and you can set up custom aggregations, which you can then use to send alerts for anomalous behavior. For example, when there are at least 20 deny operations per second for at least five minutes, you might want to get an alert. You can also set up similar monitoring and alerts for AppCheck. You want to learn more? Check the link to the post on firebase.blog that I included in the details. In the Firebase admin SDK for Node, you can now pass a prefer rest parameter when you initialize Firestore. This tells the SDK to use the REST transport layer by default, and it then only loads and uses the gRPC libraries when it encounters an operation that needs them. Now, currently, the only operation that requires gRPC is creating a snapshot listener. And since most cloud functions implementations won't use on snapshot listeners, this reduces the size of the SDK that needs to be loaded, which in turn should speed up the cold start times of those containers. Now, I haven't had a chance to test this myself yet, and there are still some known limitations, so we'd love your feedback. Upgrade to the latest admin SDK to use the new feature, and let me know in the comments how it affects your cold start times. And speaking of Firestore, the closer to the data center your users are, the faster their read and write operations complete. And we just made Firestore available in our Melbourne data centers. So if you're starting a new project with most users in that region, be sure to select the Australia Southeast 2 region for your Firestore data. Firebase's real-time database now integrates with Cloud Audit Logs to help you answer questions like who did what, where, and when. And just like for Firestore, we have two types of audit logs. First, there are the administrative audit logs, which are enabled by default and tell you about things like database creation, deletion, and configuration changes. Secondly, there are data access audit logs for regular data read and write operations. You can enable these yourselves as shown in the documentation that I'll link below. The audit logs contain a wealth of information about the exact operation that was performed and the identity that performed the operation. So start on your own whodunit adventure and check the documentation that I'll link below. Firestore's most unique guarantee is that the performance of a query depends on the number and size of the documents that you retrieve, but it does not in any way depend on the number of documents that you have in a collection. To meet this performance guarantee, Firestore makes use of many indexes that contain just the information that it needs for each query. Firestore also adds a so-called name field to each index entry to make it unique, using the document ID for regular composite indexes and the document path for collection group indexes. Now, the Firestore indexes page in the Klaus and Firebase console now shows that name field in each index definition. And as said, the name field was already part of each index definition, but it was previously hidden by the console. So check the Firestore console to see the previously hidden field. Those were all the updates we have time for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Now, my name is Frank Orpuff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.